Hey Garage Golf fam, Roland here with Garage Golf where we provide extraordinary golf info for the extra ordinary golfer. Got a really cool video, if you've watched some of our videos before, you've seen I've done a club keyboard review on the wired edition and now we got our hands on not only a wireless and really cool LED edition. So you got buttons that light up, but we also have the club keyboard stand. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of how that works together. Uh, we're gonna be testing out the wireless version of the club keyboard. This is the GS Pro LED version. This one runs about 280. The stand runs about 19 bucks. So I'll put links for both of those in the video description. I'm looking forward to bringing that to you on today's video. Make sure you stay tuned and check it out. All right, thanks again for watching and welcome back. If you're new here at Garage Golf, we provide information on golf products, golf equipment, golf technology, golf simulators, and pretty much anything golf related. So if you're new to us, make sure you subscribe, click that bell notification for more videos so you're alerted of new videos the moment they come out, like the one you're watching here today. And as always, if you have any questions on anything, make sure you reach out to me directly, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. I'm here to help you with any and all of your golf simulator needs, golf technology, projectors, golf mats, anything like that that you have questions on, reach out to me first. I'd love to be the one to help you. That's how you can help support us here at Garage Golf. That's how we stay in business. And our services are completely free of charge. So I work as an affiliate. This is how we help people. If you use our links, we get compensated. No additional cost to you. In fact, our goal is to save you money. So if anything, we're gonna help save you money when you go to make your purchase. All right, so jumping into today's video, we're here we have the club keyboard. This is the GS Pro version. Remember, they have templates that go over this that would also work with a device such as TGC 2019. Uh, but I use, traditionally I use GS Pro here on the channel and what we do personally. So we have the GS Pro version. And again, you get to see it does have the lights on here, which I think is really cool. These are LED lights. And I have the keyboard stand as well, the club keyboard stand. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how this works essentially. I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up because there's a little bit of a setup involved with this device. It still does come with a USB-C charging cord. Uh, so that's how you'll charge the device. It's actually how you're gonna connect it to your computer. So we're gonna set this up on a Windows computer first. I'll walk you through that, show you how to set it up. And then we'll test it out with some GS Pro action today and show you a little bit more of how this works and why I feel like people ask me all the time about touchscreen monitors. There's absolutely no need to basically purchase a touchscreen monitor nowadays, especially when you have a wireless device such as this. This will save you probably $1,000 over the touchscreen monitor. It's still pretty expensive stuff. Uh, really, really cool device. I want to show you a little bit more about how this works with GS Pro. All right, so in my hands, I have the USB charging cord. It's a USB... Uh, C to USB-A charging port, and it's gonna plug into the computer directly. So I'm gonna plug this in, I'll take you to the computer, we'll walk you through the setup on this, um, and we'll make sure we get it set up appropriately and the correct way for us to use it here with GS Pro. All right, so I was having a difficult time getting the club keyboard to connect, so let me walk you through something, because I'm on Windows 11, and this is in the instructions, just so you're aware. It's just kind of indicated in a different spot. Um, but what I had to do was it was not finding my device at all. So I had to go down here. It was under default. And I, I went ahead and selected that and clicked it to advanced. And the second I did that, when I add devices now, I go into add device, I go to Bluetooth. And now you see the club keyboard Bluetooth pull up. So I want to go ahead and select it. So make sure you do that if you're on Windows 11. Otherwise, you're not going to have it connect. That was one thing that I came across and the instructions are pretty good. I should have followed it a little bit more in detail, but it's definitely something that I wanted to share with you guys. So now it's connected and you see that the device is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And if you are properly connected, you're gonna see club keyboard Bluetooth show up. It is since it's connected with a wire, I also see it here. Uh, but you're going to see it pull up, and in this case, this is the Bluetooth connection. You see 100% battery charge. Club keyboard Bluetooth, I believe, is the hardwired connection. So once it's successfully paired, you're going to leave the device powered on and connected. You're not going to power off or disconnect the device in any way. But these following steps must be completed without powering down the club keyboard, and it needs to remain on throughout the rest of the process. So what we want to do is we want to remove or unpair. And again, this is only the first time you set this up. You'll never have to do this again but we want to remove or unpair the club keyboard Bluetooth device from the computer. And if we have any trouble unpairing it, which I believe we'd click here, remove device, then um, you'll need to restart your computer, but don't power down the club keyboard. So I'm gonna click on remove device. And it's gone now, all right? 
So now I need to go to the next step and in the next step I just need to repeat the pairing process that I went through. Uh, this is just to make sure that your, your computer always recognizes this device moving forward. So again, make sure you have, if you're on Windows 11, you have advanced selected. I'm gonna click on add device, Bluetooth again, and I'm gonna, just gonna connect again to the club keyboard Bluetooth. And it should connect pretty quickly and take us to the next step. And there we are, we're connected. So that's it. So now we see club keyboard Bluetooth connected, 100%, we're good to go. And that basically says, um, since it showed up, you are now fully registered in the club keyboard Bluetooth module and you will not have to complete this procedure again with the PC. Even if you unpair it and repair the device, you'll only need to pair it once. So if you get a new PC, however, you would need to repeat the double pairing process. So this is called a double pairing process. We did it, it's ready, it's good to go. It doesn't have to be plugged in anymore. Um, the only time you'll need to plug it in is when you need to charge it, you know, in between rounds or whatever you wanna do. And you can use a wall charger for that. So. We're good there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and we're good to go moving forward. All right, so I have the club keyboard stand here. I have the club keyboard here. Let's turn these lights on so I can show you that again. We've already been paired to the computer and I wanna show you uh, on the floor what this looks like because before it was just flat and then they created this, looks like a 3D printing um, option for this club keyboard stand. So I'm gonna put this down here and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more on how everything works. So let's go ahead and set it down. This will be right at your feet which will be nice. And I'm gonna set this on top. I think I actually have it the wrong way. Just like that. And there we go. So now, I have everything kind of pointed right at me. I'm good to go. I'm able to hit it with my club. I can see it more at an angle. It's lit up, so even when I have it dark in here, I'm gonna be able to see the buttons and what I need to do. So I'm pretty excited about the wireless version of this keyboard because now I'm not having a, I have enough wires in here, obviously as it is with certain devices, but I like the ability to not have to use this as a wired device. So let's get to testing and see how it works. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna kick the lights down a bit so you can see the actual gameplay behind me. I have the club keyboard wireless LED version down here now. It's so much better having it angled up at me uh, and with having lights too. So you can see right away, it's gonna to connect to the computer and you see the screen as I aim right or left. So if you haven't watched my other review on the club keyboard, the wired version, make sure you check that out as well. But for those that want a wireless version, I anticipate this being the exact same experience, which is phenomenal. There's 18 buttons on the actual um, club keyboard, the wireless and wired editions. So it has things like flyovers. If I wanna do a flyover, for example, hit a flyover button gonna show me a cool flyover of the actual hole I'm about to play. It has heat maps, it has a mulligan button, which got worn out a bit on my other one, <laughs> uh, but pretty cool thing. Uh, target button, it has a map zoom button, in or out, hide objects, go to ball, club, up or down, you can adjust your club if you want to. So I change it from, say, a three hybrid to a driver, bottom left-hand corner down there. Um, so really cool, you have the ability to change everything you need. Reset aim, aim point, scorecard button. I'm gonna pull up your scorecard. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna play two holes. We're playing Valhalla, so it may sound familiar, obviously, PGA Championship. Um, and I'm just gonna play two holes with you and I'll show you kind of some of the buttons that you might use on a regular basis as you're playing GS Pro. And we'll see what you guys think at home. So I'm gonna hit a driver shot. And you see I have this mat down. Um, Unicore sent me their balance optics mat which I'm testing out as well. Um, obviously, it's the first time I've used the driver with it because it's a little too far away, so I'm gonna stand right on the edge of it here. But check that video out too if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, horrible shot. And as we show we keep everything 100% real, but just because I want to show you the button, I'm going to hit the mulligan button. Boom. I'm right back on the tee box so I can hit a decent shot now. I hit a bad shot on purpose, of course, so I can show you how to use that button. All right. Good shot down the middle. Decent for me, anyways. There's my whopping 200-yard drive. We'll take it for now. 
All right, so 189. Now, let's just say I want to see where I'm aiming with the Club Keyboard Wireless Edition. Hit the target button, and I get to see where I'm actually aiming on the course. And now, with the aim button, I can actually aim right or left as well. So pretty cool feature if you want to play a fade or a draw into a shot. That's a really neat feature without having to go back and forth to your computer, which is really nice. Next, if I want to use the heat map, I can pop that up too. And that's going to show me the break of the green on GS Pro as well. So really cool feature. That way you know which way the green's going to be breaking. I like that one a lot as well. Okay, decent strike. Gonna be a little short, use the five iron there. That's because I was short with my driver too. So 24 yards away. And now again, target view, you wanna check that out. And you can see as you get closer, you're gonna see the green now. We see that our ball would break a little bit to our right there. You may not be able to see that on yours, but we go um, to the heat map again, just to check it out. So, Heat map's going to show you down there in the bottom right, you know, a little bit in regards to how it breaks. The darker the color, the more elevation, and vice versa. So it's breaking down, uh, but it's also breaking a little bit from our left to our right. Which we can see again, take the heat map off with the target view. We're going to be breaking a little bit left to right with our shot. Now, if I have the target view up, for example, and I don't want to take it down, you don't have to take it down. You can still hit your shot. Let me show you that. I am 24 yards away. So it'll take you back to your normal view, of course. And here's, and I have auto putt feature on, but if I don't, or if you want to adjust your putt aim, this is where it's going to be really, really good, where you can adjust your aim in regards to where you're at on the actual green. That'll help save you probably at least 20 minutes around just by having that feature, which is nice. I personally like the auto putt uh, align feature. So everyone who's played Mario Golf or anything knows how to line up a putt on a video game ever since the dawn of time. So really to me, that's not a skill necessarily. It's just a matter of doing it and having to take the time to do it. I'd rather just get the speed down. Now GS Pro is notoriously fast, this is an even putt 16 feet away from my ball to the screen, probably about nine to 10 feet. But if I were to hit it to the screen, probably roll past the hole a good 10, 15 feet. So I'm gonna hit this putt about 16, about 16 feet. I'll probably hit it about eight feet. So let's see if we can get it there in that distance. Just a tad short. But as you see, I don't think I rolled it even eight feet. And almost got me there. So we got a bogey on that hole. You've seen how quickly you can go through an actual hole or around with the club keyboard, especially having it wireless, not having any restrictions really, which is nice. Um, if you have this with a device like an IXO, you don't have any wires anywhere, which is great. Of course, I got a lot of equipment in here that we're testing and reviewing. So iMini Lite has a cord, um, Unicore Balance Optics has cords. But take all that away, we have a really clear setup. By the way, I'm using the Unicorn Mini Lite with GS Pro right now. Um, so if you haven't checked out the Unicorn Mini Lite and it's in your price point, 2750, great device. Make sure you check that out also. Okay, I've adjusted the mat this time so I can swing driver. We got a little bit of a right to left here. Let's see how we do. A little right to left. I'm going a little left to right. Awesome. I'm under a tree, at least I'm in the shade. So this is a par five, I'm 278 away still. Um, let's say though that I was kind of near a tree and I needed to block that view of the tree, like if it's blocking my view of the golf ball, there's even a hide objects button that you could hit and that would pretty much take away that kind of thing as well. So that's cool, that's a neat feature. I don't have it here to show you, but if you are in the woods or you have a shot that is blocked by something, there's a feature for that and that's even connected to the keyboard, which is nice. So, like I said, with 18 buttons, there's not much that you can't do with this device. Um, but again, right now, since I'm aiming, basically, it's gonna put me somewhere in between where I'm at and the flag. A lot of times it's a direct line of sight. 
So sometimes you're not really knowing where your target is. And since we're not going down to click the map down there, I like to be able to hit that target V to C and then adjust accordingly, right or left, to adjust your aim. And then just hit target and we're back at it again. So I'm gonna try to aim basically where I have there. Let's hit a shot, see if we can get it down there and hopefully get us in contention for potential birdie here. Okay, good strike there. Ah, in the rough though. Should have aimed a little bit further right. All right, so 134 away now for our next shot. Now there's also an aim point button, which if you just want to go straight to the green and see the break a little closer. Um, not much break on the shot. It's going downhill towards the flag and a little to my right. So let's say I was skilled enough to actually aim where I'm aiming. You know, that's a nice thing to be able to see. Um, but because I'm in the rough, I don't know what my penalty is going to be. I'm going to hit that target button again. And I'm probably just going to aim a little bit further right to play it safe in relation to that green. So hopefully if I do come up short, I'm not going to be in the rough or in the bunker or anything like that. I got an 8 iron. I'm going to be hitting from essentially 134 away, but I'm in the rough, so I'll be penalized a bit for that. Let's take this shot. Felt like I struck it good, and I did. I did, I did, I did. Ah, outside that gimme circle. But now we're going to be putting. Ooh, look at that ball roll. A lot of slope on that green. Better stay on. Don't you do that to me. All right. Again, auto putt is set for me, so you really don't have to do a lot there. But again, you can adjust your aim if you needed to. I'm hitting a 14-foot putt here. I'm going to show you how quickly we can get this hole done and hopefully knock it down for birdie. Almost had a birdie on that hole. We got a par. Not bad overall, though. All right, so just a quick two holes. Again, I've done a full review on this device already, but this time it's wireless. And to me, the wireless is just awesome to have that ability to be able to not have that wire. For a lot of people who have setups where you don't need a wire for all the stuff like I have here, it's a really cool setup. So nice and clean. Um, you can charge it in between rounds and it does everything that the wired version does. So I had a lot of people who asked me about the wired version um, to ask me if they had a wireless one. At the time I did the review, they did not, but now they do. Um, so in comparison, I would definitely take a look at the wireless version. I think it gives you a lot of options. Make sure you also look at the keyboard stand, the club keyboard stand, because to me that makes all the difference in the world, having it angled up at you uh, for you to be able to see everything. And I like the LED personally. I mean, if it's me and I'm gonna invest a little bit of money in a device like this, I like having the LED version. I just think it's a lot better. Plus, I, I do a lot of videos, or when, even when I'm just playing on my own in here, with the lights off, just one spotlight on me, as you saw before. And the lights really make a big difference for me to be able to see. It gives me a little bit of ambient lighting, too, which I like a lot. So make sure, um, if you have any questions on the club keyboard, reach out to me. Again, this, this is something that I've done a full review on that I've been testing for almost a year now. And I'm a big fan of it. Like I said, nobody else really has this many buttons and layouts. and to me, this is a great option. If you're considering a touchscreen monitor, make sure you consider the club keyboard, whether it be wired, wireless. Uh, again, I will put my link for this product down. It isn't, I'm an affiliate for this product, um, just full disclosure, but I only back things that I have personally tested, that I trust, and that I've used myself. So I will never steer you wrong. I will always give you honest advice. Um, and if it's something I don't like, I won't put my name behind it. That's just how I've always been with Garage Golf. And that's how I'm always gonna continue to be no matter what we do you know, here on the channel or as a business. So I look forward to helping you. If you have any questions, reach out to me, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Again, if you're looking for anything simulator related, whether it be a club keyboard, mats, and a screen, launch monitors, I'm your go-to person. Reach out to me via that email. We'll talk, my services are completely free of charge. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with us as always on all of our videos. Keep an eye out for more content. We're doing a lot of reviews on a lot of products that I'm going to be bringing your way. So I look forward to doing that. Till the next time, as always, keep on golfing, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.